Excuse me, can you tell me where Professor Vahl is? Who? Professor Vahl, the famous sculptor. I know he lives near here in a mill. Oh, now I know. Follow me. Far away, on the other side of the canal, at the mill of the stone women. What's that? That's what we call it, the windmill of the stone women. Is that it? No, it's further on, beyond the cemetery of Vese. Van Arnhem. Hans Van Arnhem. What do you want here? I have an appointment here with Professor Val. Good. Come in. Wait here if you please. If you please, sir. The professor said you ought to wait for him in his studio. Yes, but I... You will come this way. Through this door.
Stop it, Conrad. Never abruptly. You understand? Hans van Arnim? Yes, sir. Professor Gregorius Wall. Why didn't you send me word in advance? I would have advised you right away not to bother leaving Rotterdam. It was Professor Koran who sent me here. I'm only his assistant. He told me you had been informed of my arrival. He should have waited for me to confirm it. Why does it have to be so urgent? We are very close to the deadline Professor Koran agreed upon with the editor. The monograph about your carousel should come out in time for the centennial. I'd forgotten all about that connection. That's so. This coming February, it will be exactly 100 years since my great-grandfather first opened the carousel to the public, just as it is today. And you, when do you want to begin? Uh, tomorrow, if I may. Professor Koran has given me just 10 days. Ah, no. Now that you're already here, you'd better begin right away. I don't have much time that I can spare you. You'll have to work very quickly. If you'll follow me, please. Conrad, adjust the brake. It's dangerous the way it is. Yes, sir, Professor. I'm just doing it now. Please be very careful. This part of the loft is full of obstructions. It houses the gears and cogwheels. Are they still the original statues? Most of them are, yes. Some of them I've had to duplicate myself. You saw an example in my studio. It was certainly very striking. And you do the finishing, too? I must do everything by myself. This way, please. Here you are. You can do your work in here. It's a very peaceful little nook. You see, I've already made a preliminary selection of the more interesting and curious documents concerning the history of the carousel. If you want them, they're here for your perusal. Could I take them home with me? No. I prefer you not to. I'll have the pleasure of being at your disposal while you're working, and I would like everything that is written to be accurate and precise. I shall take a few days off from my duties at the Academy. Oh, it's late already. I have a lesson to give. You have only three hours to work in. The last for parts at 7 o'clock. Don't miss it, please. Don't worry about me. Ah, I nearly forgot. You must keep in mind that everything will have to be finished within five or six days at the most. Have a pleasant time, Hans. She's better, resting peacefully. Good. Annie Laurie. Annie Laurie. Annie Laurie. <laughs> Why do you have to bother her, too? I haven't been able to get a clean line drawn all day. You're nervous, my dear Lizalotta. You're in such a temper whenever you expect Hans. Huh. What a clown you are, Rob. <laughs> Today, you've obviously let your mind go off wool gathering. What can be the matter? Oh, nothing. I guess I'm just a bit distracted. Uh, excuse me, Professor. Yes? Did a Mr. Van Arnhem come around to call on you today? Yes, why, do you know him too? 
Oh, we've been friends since we were children. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. That young fellow seemed to be very serious. I believe he's going to do an excellent job. Students, the life class is over. And I want to tell you that on Tuesday I shall not be at the academy and we will meet on the following Friday in the sculptor class. Good afternoon. Four whole days on holiday. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> what are you planning to do? To go to Dodson with Hans. It's our hometown. Carpe diem, Lotte. Pluck the occasion, because if you don't get hold of Hans now, the next time you see him, he'll have white hair. That's what I hope to do. But it would be a miracle. You stop that now. We're the last ones here. Hans is waiting outside. He might go away. Come on. Shame. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Can you give me a light for my cigar, if you please? I think I have one. I requested a light for my cigar. Oh, forgive me. I'm sorry. Very kind of you, Mr. Um... Uh, Van Einen. Hans Van Einen. Bolem, Dr. Bolem. Good evening, Mr. Van Arnim. Uh, good evening. Excuse me, please. see each other anymore. No, but I'll drop your postcard every now and then. Goodbye, Rod <laughs> Downing. The best of luck to you, Annie Laurie. What are you doing here? Me? Oh, nothing. Just standing here watching the show without pay. <laughs> what a little goose you are. I went by your house for you and you weren't there. I was beginning to worry. It's not a habit of yours to worry about me. Oh, all right. I know I'm late, but you have to thank your old professor who made me start working right away. It was he who made me late. All right, are you satisfied? Hmm. No? Then there's only one remedy. Have dinner with me. Oh, cheer up now. Come on. Oh, 
finally you two have the kindness to come and share my solitude with me. <laughs> How are you? Uh, instead of being a student, I would have done better if I had learned to be a dancer. And you, we've missed you. What have you been up to all this time? Oh, bowling a few games with Professor Val. Your order, please, sir. <laughs> How did things go today with Val? My impression was that he wanted to impose an ultimatum. I have to finish everything within a week. I have to stay at the mill from morning till evening. You know him so well. Do you know if he has a daughter? A daughter? I believe so. The mother died due to the effects of childbirth. Wait a minute, she has an unusual name. Elfie, as I remember, or something like that. Elfie, yes. What kind of woman is she? Oh, well, I wouldn't know. No one has ever seen her in town. Maybe her father will never let her out of his sight. <laughs> or maybe she's such a monster, he's ashamed to let her be seen. <laughs> I think it's strange. Very strange. And why? Because she's beautiful. Perfectly lovely. Don't you get what he really means? How do you know? Do you know her? No. But I do know you. You said it on purpose, just to make her angry. No, I was only telling the truth. But I didn't think she would be so upset. Be a good fellow, Ram. See what you can do. All right, then, I get you. I'm Elfie. Hans. Hans von Arnim. Won't you sit down a while, if you like? No. I mustn't, Hans. I mustn't stay now. There are always people who are spying, eyes that are watching. I've no explanation to give you. Oh, but I have to see you. Absolutely, I must. This evening. This evening? But where? Here, in the windmill. But that seems imprudent. Someone might see us together. Is it so urgent? Yes, Hans, I beg you. At 11 o'clock, everyone will be asleep. Nobody will discover anything. Take this key. It opens the door to the windmill. I implore you. You must come here. I'll be waiting. I feel tired now. I want to get some rest. I'll see you to your room, if you'll permit me. Good night, dear Papa. Good night, my child. I must compliment you, Elfie. You played that excellently. I've never heard you play that way before, with so much passion. I wasn't playing it for you, Bolam. I was aware of that. But don't forget that I am the only person in the whole world who knows everything about you. I am the only person you have a right to love, Elfie. Pity, Bolam. Forgive me.
Elfie. Hans. You gave me a fright just then. Didn't you hear me knock? Sleeping, Hans. Excuse me if I've awakened you, but today you said it was urgent for you to speak to me. Then I saw you lying here like this. So strange, so still. I was dreaming, Hans. I was dreaming that you were on your way to me from far off. And I was still waiting for you. I expected you to be, I don't know, someone dear to me. And finally, there you were, moving closer. And all I wanted to do was go on dreaming. I wanted the dream to continue. I never want it to end now, Hans. That was a dangerous dream you had. You never know how it might end. Why do you want it to? Don't I please you? You do please me, Elfie. But afterwards... Afterwards doesn't matter. I'm here and I want you. I'm here for you, don't you see? Take me in your arms. There are some friends of yours waiting downstairs at the entrance of the carousel. Who? Don't know. The young gentleman and the young lady. I'm coming. if I show more interest in the statuary. <laughs> it recently. Because only recently, I realized what love means. Your love. But I don't believe I'm worthy of you. Why not? I'm ashamed to tell you the reason. Don't tell me. Could you forgive me? For everything? Oh, yes, sir. I love you.
frighten me. There's the poisoner of Poitiers. What's happened here? A young lady she seems to have fainted. Quick, quick. Come on. Oh, yes, Doctor. Yes, Professor. Oh, yes, Professor. Oh, yes, Professor. Oh, my dear Miss Lisa Lotta, what's the matter with you? What happened to her? I really don't know. I can't understand. Oh, just a moment. I ought to have something here for her. Oh, yes, here you are. Let us sniff these smelling salts. It's nothing serious. It's only a minor fainting fit. She'll recover in no time. It's a common occurrence here. How are you feeling, Lotta? Oh. oh, better, thank you. Please, Hans, let's not stay here any longer. It would be better if you took her outside. Oh, wait a minute, if you please. Just one moment. What have you done here? Oh, <laughs> you must have stuck yourself with the point of one of your hat pins. Yeah, there's nothing to worry about. It's no more than a tiny scratch. There. Come, my dear, just lean on me. That's a girl. <laughs> Do forgive me. I'm really embarrassed at having made such a disturbance. Oh, not at all. Think nothing of it, my dear young lady. Just concentrate on staying well. I want to see you there at our regular sculpture lesson on Friday morning. Thank you. If you please, Hans, before you go up to your own study, would you drop in on me? Of course, Professor. Excuse me, you two, if I don't come along with you, but I have to return to my work. Now I'm in a hurry to finish it up. We have to take that trip to Dartson, don't we? Yes. So long, Rob, and thanks for everything. So long. <laughs> my compliments to you. He's in your clutches again, huh? Of course he is. <laughs> May I come in? Ah, please come in. Listen carefully. You will probably think it strange that I've interrupted your work to discuss a subject that would seem to belong more appropriately in the circle of my own immediate family. But you will soon understand why I do so. I have a young and only daughter, Elfie, almost an invalid with the same malady that proved fatal to her mother. Science can do nothing to cure her. All we can do is try to keep her alive. And that is why Dr. Bolam lives here. He's always ready to act, to detect the slightest symptom, to take the necessary measures, all as a precaution against her reaching a crisis. And does she realize how ill she is? Unfortunately, she doesn't want to accept the fact. She doesn't see why she can't lead a normal life like other girls. The slightest emotional upset, the slightest disturbance of any kind must absolutely be avoided. Her life depends on it. You seem a worthy young man. And I hope by now you understand why I wish to speak frankly of my daughter. It's an entreaty and also a final warning. One crisis will cause her death. You can count on me. I was sure I could. Hans. Please. I mustn't delay you.
I was expecting you, Hans. I felt that something would bring you back to me. Are you sure it wasn't the note you wrote me, Elfie? Forgive me. I was desperate. I don't know. I felt something like a presentiment that you never wanted to see me again. That you didn't ever want to come back to me. I should have delivered your letter straight to your father. But it seemed an ungrateful thing to do to you. And anyone who's entrusted me with a confidence, even if I have abused it. You repudiate me and my love for you because of absurd scruples like these. Not just because of that. We both have made a great mistake, Elfie. It was madness on our part, and we mustn't do the same again. But I'm in love with you, Hans. I love no one but you, can't you see? Oh, even if there were others before who were able to take advantage of my solitude here and also of my inexperience. But perhaps that's why you cannot forgive me. Is that what's taking you away from me? It's unfair of you. If you knew what a horrible life I have to lead. Lonely. Shut inside these walls all the time. I understand you, Elfie, and I have no right to reprove you for anything. But I cannot deceive you. I'm just not capable of it. I don't love you, Elfie. And what does that matter? As long as you let me love you. As long as I can always be at your side. Please take me away from here. Far away from here. I would go with you wherever you like. I beg you not to talk this way. You know how impossible it is. You must remain here. We leave each other now. Break off right away. Forget everything. Hans, you can't keep it from me now. You're in love with that girl, aren't you? Yes, I know you are. I saw you. But no one on earth will ever take you away from me. I wouldn't even stop it killing you. Stop it, Elfie. Stop this play acting. You're insane, unbalanced. Yes. Yes. It's because I want you to be my own. My own. Elfie. Elfie.
Mr. Hans. Excuse me for not answering the door sooner. I was doing my morning chores. What is it you wish? What is it that you wish? I wish to speak at once with Professor Wahl. It's extremely urgent. Well, to tell you the truth, he hasn't rung for me yet. I realize it's not the right moment, but it's absolutely necessary for me to see him. I'm very sorry, sir, but I can't disturb him when it's not even seven yet. He should ring the bell for me before very long, if you'd like to wait a little while. What is it? What do you want? I didn't realize you were already in here. I was only going to dust and straighten up the room. Uh, just a minute. Selma. What is it, sir? Come in. Can you tell me if there's been anybody else in this room since yesterday evening? Nobody comes in here ever. And this rose, did you put it here? I don't have time to gather flowers, sir, I assure you. May I come in? Selma, outside. Yes, Doctor. Professor Val would like to have a word with you. Yes, I'm coming. <sighs> but what's the matter? Are you feeling ill? No, it's nothing. You don't look as though you're feeling very well. You must have a fever. You've hurt yourself here. Leave me alone. It's nothing, I tell you, doctor. Oh. You shouldn't speak to him in this condition, whatever the reason for it may be, which must be very serious, judging from your appearance. Please excuse me. I'm so terribly upset. I understand. Let me just see now. What do I have here to give you? Oh, of course, I'll give you a sedative. It will put you back in shape. Here you are. Two of these tablets will soon calm your nervousness. There, drink it down. Now I'm sure you'll be feeling better. You murderer. You're nothing but a coward and a murderer. No. You have to believe me. That's the reason I'm here. I simply had to speak to you, to confess the whole truth to you. Mere words. Miserable excuses. You've taken criminal advantage of my hospitality, which should have been held sacred by you. I opened my heart to you as a father. I made you see how terrible the illness was that threatened the life of my Alfie, and you are responsible for her death. This alone is the truth of the matter. You murdered her. You murdered her! No! It's the truth, the truth, I tell you! I don't want to hear about it, deliberately or by chance. 
Now no one can give my daughter back to me again. Elfie is dead now. Elfie is lying in her grave. She's resting in peace. No one shall be permitted to besmirch her dear memory. No one must ever know of any of this. No one, I said. Elfie is in her tomb. <laughs> in the cemetery of Beze. Let her slumber peacefully in her eternal repose. In peace. In peace. In peace. Extremely ill. Ah. I know there was a blood stain. Here. A blood stain? From what? From what? Why should you have bled?
Open up! Open up this door! Mr. Van Arnim, what are you doing here at this time of the night? What are you up to? I want to know what's going on in this house. Where's Professor Val? I must speak to him right now. Calm yourself, young man. What's the matter with you? Who's that girl in there? A girl, you said? Don't lie. I saw her in there, tied to a chair. In there? Young man, you're quite mistaken. However, one moment. There. See for yourself if it will set your mind at rest. Where is Professor Val? I want to talk to him. Where is he? But you must be insane. Try to calm down now. Get out of my way. Professor Val! Professor Val! Professor Val! Professor Val! Open the door! Open the door! Who's there? Professor Val! 
Professor Lowe! Wait. Get hold of yourself. Conrad. Let him alone. What's the matter with you? Professor, I have to talk to you. Some more light. At this hour of the night? Well, it's one o'clock. I've already tried to reason with him, but he's apparently lost all control of himself. Yes, you're right, but with the impossible things going on, you owe me an explanation. Mr. Van Arnim, I trust you realize that it is to me you owe an explanation. Professor, today I made your confession. You made me swear that I would never again speak of Elfie or of what happened to her. Elfie? What on earth are you saying? Who ever spoke to you of my daughter? And what is supposed to have happened to her? But can it be possible that you don't remember? Or is it that you don't want to? I begin to comprehend. You want to make me feel remorse as if I'd committed a crime. No. No! I'm not a criminal, and I won't accept the guilt! But you have completely taken leave of your senses. Crime, remorse. Why, well, these are the ravings of a madman. Hallucination, a typical case of mental instability. Uh, no. You are trying to make me believe that Elfie is still alive. That bracelet. Yes, her bracelet. It was there on your work table. And then... Then it was on Elfie's wrist, inside her tomb. Elfie? Elfie inside her tomb? But what tomb do you mean? In the cemetery of Weser, where you yourself, Professor, told me she'd been buried. And she's there, inside her tomb, dead. Dead! Not alive! What's wrong, Papa? Hans! No! No! Hans! But what are all of you doing here? And why are you shouting? Oh, it's nothing serious. Never mind, Elfie. We were having a discussion. Go back to your room, dear. Bolum, see her to her room. Conrad. Young man, I'm not a physician. However, I understand nonetheless that your present state of mental disturbance endangers the tranquility of my house, as well as Elfie's. What are your orders, Professor? Get the carriage ready to take Mr. Van Arnim back into town, right away. Yes, sir. And now, come with me. There are many things that you must explain. Telling an absurd story. You lied to me, Bolan. Hans is not unbalanced. He came here to see me and you prevented him. Don't cling to illusions, Elfie. You must forget about him. Never. Never. Hans for me is life itself. No, Hans for you is certain death. I alone can give you life and safety. Your life is bound to mine forever. To a creature like yourself, don't be a fool. I wonder what your Hans would say if he were ever to know what you really are. You'll never tell him, Bolin. You're too much of a coward to risk your life that way. Now leave me alone. Excuse me, the carriage is ready, Professor Hall. Very well. Ah. After all you've told me, you will realize that your presence in this house has become an absolute impossibility. You will even have to forget that you were ever here at all. Forget it now, if you don't want to be considered a madman. If you please. Farewell, Mr. Van Arnim. I sincerely trust that you will soon be yourself again. Finally made it. 
Olam, my plan has succeeded. I knew I was not mistaken. I must confess that all of your stratagems were brought off to perfection. And that drug which you administered to him completely cancelled every dividing line between reality and hallucination. He'll never be able to tell anyone what really happened here if he doesn't want to run the risk of being declared hopelessly insane. That may be, but I still believe the other solution would have been preferable. Ah, but it would have been far too dangerous to kill him when everybody knew he was working here as part of my house. Hans will be a danger to you as long as he lives. Your daughter is in love with him. She'll stop at nothing to see him again. Eventually, she will forget all about him because Hans will never be seen here anymore. He's undergone an experience here that would be enough to unsettle the soundest mentality. Unfortunately, there was a fact that is hard to cancel, even in his unsettled mind. Which is? He's seen Elfie die. And so? He held her in his arms, her inert and lifeless body. For Hans, that was also a state of hallucination. He hasn't the slightest evidence, not a single concrete proof that could ever conduct him back to reality. I can only hope that you're right. But the mere thought that he might be able to see your daughter again makes me tremble. He might question her, investigate, discover that Elfie has been dying and reliving for years. He might understand how it is that we restore her to life. And then there could be no escape for us or for her. In that case, I should be forced to follow your advice. Elfie. Another attack. Quickly, Bollum. I will save you, Elfie. I'll save you yet again, never fear. Get everything here ready, Bollum. I'll see to the rest myself. Yes, little Annie Laurie, I will set you free. Just calm yourself now. You'll not have to suffer any more. You must wait just a little while longer. Only a little while longer. Everything is ready, Professor. Good. quickly. There, 
there now, Elfie. Your sick blood is going away. It's draining away. It'll be just a few seconds more. Ready, Doctor? Quickly! Pull him! Yes, Professor. Tell me, how is he feeling now, Doctor? Medically speaking, he's cured. The rest he's had has done him good. But these few days were all that were needed to bring him round. I was afraid he was going to lose his mind. Well, it was a severe case of nervous exhaustion, that's true. A nervous breakdown? That's strange. One day you're all right, and then all of a sudden... Yes, an oddly acute form of it. Quite unexpected. But what do you suppose happened to him? Ah, that. I really don't know. It should be easier for you, his friends, to know this than it is for me. Is there anything more we can do for him? Oh, nothing in particular. Entertainment. Keep him amused. That shouldn't be too difficult, I'd say, for you. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Please don't mention Here you that. are. If you'll permit me, I'll accompany Thank your you. carriage. Thank you. Good morning. Well, what's the verdict? Am I given up for lost, or is there still a bit of hope for me? Bad news for you, Hans. You're well now. And now you can get out of bed and go out. And escape from me. <laughs> Thinking of yourself, aren't you? You must have enjoyed being a nurse to me. Finding me here all the time, well behaved, completely defenseless. Yes, I enjoyed it. I admit it. You know, I really liked hearing you call for me every minute. You kept saying, Lisa Lotta, I feel so lost without you. Lotta, don't leave me. Lotta, hold my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I really must have been in a bad way then. Oh, you can have your jokes with me as much as you please. I don't believe a word you say. Oh, no? And why not? Because when you were delirious, you gave yourself completely away. And now I know that you love me. You know all this. And do you also know when I can get out of bed? Oh, in two, three days, if you like. That's too long to wait. Hans, what are you doing? No, no, it's too long to wait. I have some important business to be taken care of by tomorrow. I want to make a little trip to Dartson and respectfully ask the parents of a certain young lady if they will consent to have her marry a poor fellow like me. Hans, you mean... <laughs> I think that you could help me at least this once. I've refused to do so for three years, and I refuse to do it now. Whatever you may think of me, I'm still a doctor, not a sadistic mummifier of women. <laughs> Strange scruples for a doctor expelled from the medical profession for malpractice. 
for the miserable ex-convict that you most surely are. Aren't you forgetting that my statues are your salvation as well as mine? I'm not forgetting it, Val, but I was never willing to help you put dead bodies on display. My only duty here is to save your daughter's life. I might even say that my desire to do so comes from my love of science, but that wouldn't be the exact truth. The reasons that motivate you are of no interest to me whatsoever, Bolum. As long as you take care of Elfie, keep that in mind. This is the truth of the matter. I know it, Val. Professor Val. What do you want? While you've been playing with death here, I've triumphed over it. As you are well aware, I've already isolated a certain serum, able to prolong indefinitely the life of red corpuscles. But that wasn't enough. It was necessary for us to find the exact type of blood that would correspond with your daughter's own, mm. a blood type extremely hard to find. Well then, now I've found it. Uh -huh. Your daughter will be able to live now, like a normal girl. Whose blood is it? Lisa Lotta Kornheim. Hmm. Oh, 52 steps up here. We could just as well wait it downstairs. Give her a whistle. Lisa Lotta. I bet she's still asleep. Lisa Lotta. Who is it? Who are you looking for? Oh, it's you, Mr. Hunt. I suppose you were looking for Miss Lisa Lotta. Yes. Lisa Lotta has not returned to her rooms yet. How can that be? Mm. We had an appointment here. You may have had one. Why? What do you mean? Well, I... I don't know if I'm doing right. Go on. Please tell us. Miss Lisa Lotte hasn't been back here since last night. And didn't she say, didn't she leave any message for me? Well, really, if she had left word, I would surely have given it to you immediately. Maybe there's a note inside her room. Well, if you want to see for yourselves, I'll unlock the door. I wonder why she left her pocketbook here. Well, what of it? She could have taken another with her. 
No. She wouldn't have gone out without her papers and her money. It's very strange. Oh, there must be a thousand explanations for it. Well, what's the matter? This girl here. Well? She's a redhead. Yes, she has red hair. What of it? It's she. There's no doubt that it was she I saw. What do you mean? You must have seen her, of course, in the beer garden with us. No, I never saw her before that night. How is it possible? How is it possible for everything to have been just an hallucination? Why does that nightmare still haunt me? Hans, listen to me. While you were sick, I asked you several questions. You didn't want to answer any of them, and I didn't insist on it. But now the situation has all changed. That girl you recognized with red hair is Annie Laurie. She's a model. You say that you saw her on a certain night. Where was she? I saw her in a cellar, tied to a chair. Where was it? In an underground room of the mill. Just a minute. Let's go over this again. Annie Laurie told me she was about to leave for Paris. She was supposed to come and pose, but she never did. Now, if you had really never laid eyes on Annie Laurie before, you couldn't have known who she was from a photograph, and especially know for sure that she has red hair. Therefore, it couldn't have been just an hallucination. You must have really seen her in that underground room. But then, it was all real. All of what? Now you have to tell me, Hans. You must tell me everything. What happened to you? Come on now. blood hasn't undergone the slightest alteration, the red corpuscle count has remained constant. We can perform the operation on Elfie this very night. Are you certain of all this, Doctor? Are you sure that there's not the least risk involved for Elfie? No risk whatever. In that case, I agree to your going ahead with the operation tonight without delay. We'll have to clear all this out of the way. Please help me. Will you tell Conrad that this statue will have to be set up in the carousel tonight without fail? He must do it promptly. Very well. To me, it's an infernal puzzle. Hans, in all this story you've just told me, there are some things that are absurd, and others that are certainly true, like Annie Laurie. And how do you explain her being down there, in that awful cellar? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. There are too many things I can't account for yet. If we could only find a clue, an indication, one proven fact, just to demonstrate that your story is really true. Of course. The cemetery. The cemetery of Vese. Empty. But then...
dummy. I'm so afraid of thunder. When I was a little girl, I used to run and hide under the bed. And you? Weren't you afraid too? No. Because you were never all alone like me. In this house, bleak and dark as it is. Maybe then you already knew Hans. You nestled close to him when it thundered, didn't you? It must have been very exciting. Wonderfully exciting. To tremble as he embraced you. But now all that is going to change, Lisa Lotte. Now Hans is going to love me. Because you won't be here anymore. Because your life will belong to me. Here, in this serum, is your daughter's life. Three years of lengthy and continual experimenting, Val. One minute after Elfie's blood is drained off, the serum will be introduced into this chamber where it will be mixed with the new blood in regulated quantities. Yes. Without this serum, the red corpuscles would not have the strength to survive, and since the body would be unable to generate new ones, they would die. Slowly but surely, they would be destroyed, as if by cancer. It will only be necessary to put your daughter under a light anesthetic. The fluid could provoke a painful reaction. The rest of the operation will proceed exactly as all the others. There is no risk at all. Allow me to congratulate you, Bolam. You've thought of everything. Almost everything. Hans, let's not do anything foolish. It doesn't matter if Lise Lotte's in danger. Now, go down in the basement. We'll need a lantern. Over there, by the front door. Mummified. It looks like Annie Laurie. Lisa Lotta! The trap door is under here. How do we get to it? We've got to move this quickly. Push harder. Everything is ready, Professor. Good. Let's proceed. Just one moment, Professor Val. What do you want? This will be the very last operation because 
Elsie will no longer require my service as a physician. True. And so? You know very well how long I've been struggling to keep her alive. I've committed atrocious crimes for her. And now I'm giving her a completely new life. Come to the point. I have the right to claim a fair compensation. I've never haggled over money. It's not money I want. What is it then? I want your daughter, Val. Do you realize what you're saying, Bollum? Yes. I love Elsie. I've loved her for years. And it's due to my efforts alone that she is still alive. Elsie must be my wife. Your wife? <laughs> How could you ever have permitted yourself to think that I would entrust Elfie to such a creature as you are? A criminal and an outcast from any decent society who'd still be rotting in prison if it wasn't for me. Don't forget that. I'm not forgetting anything. But now I'm the one who has the upper hand. This is the first time in my life I've ever wanted anything. And now I'm going to have it. Don't delude yourself. Not only will you never have my daughter, but I will never even permit Elfie to owe her existence to the loathsome individual that I know you to be, Bolo. I've made use of you as I would have of any other tool. Now it's over. I don't need you any longer, Bolum. Your fate is sealed. The only face my daughter will see when she returns to life will be mine. Mine and mine alone. <coughs> Killing me. You have murdered your own daughter. It's no use. There's there's another way in through our studio. Now you will be well. You will be well forever, Elfie. I will bring you back to life. I and nobody else. It's here, Rob. Where is it? Quickly. Miss Elotta, she's alive. Get her untied. Hurry. Elfie. 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 You 
killed her, you murderer! You all have to die! All of you! All of you! Hurry! Take her that way! Fire! This way! Through the house! 